Your location is a critical factor in the modern day data-driven marketing industry. By tracking every square foot of your whereabouts, ad networks can link what ads you see online with specific stores you visit in real life. Location tracking isn't just a price tag of apps that need your location to deliver their features, like maps, weather apps, or search engines. Even apps that have nothing to do with location services are all in on tracking where you are and monetizing your data. Toggling off location services in your settings manager will only affect about 1 in 5 of the major tracking mechanism we'll cover in this video. Alongside GPS, we'll also be looking at how your cellular radio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even ultrasonic cross-device tracking using your microphone can leave a permanent record of your location history. This is all the ways your phone tracks your location. If you wanna find me, please just send me location. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. GPS. Every modern phone is enabled with a GPS receiver that communicates with the Global Navigation Satellite System or GNSS network. To determine your precise location, your phone has to receive microwaves from at least four satellites in orbit. The distance to each satellite estimates your phone's receiver's exact longitude, latitude, elevation, and time. When you give apps permission to access your location, it usually means access to your GPS coordinates. Global Positioning System has been around for decades and it's one of the most reliable and accurate sources of location information. Although GPS signals can bounce off steep surfaces on tall buildings or in mountainous regions and can have a difficult time passing through hard structures, GPS is still among the most trusted sources of accurate location tracking. Some people seem to have been shocked to realize their location was still being tracked even when they switched on airplane mode. Airplane mode only disables cellular network and data, and in some cases even Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. GPS is completely unrelated, so your phone will continue pulling satellite info from the GNSS network, and once you're back online, the full history of your coordinates will be transferred to any app you're granted location permission. To prevent leakage of your GPS data, downgrade location permissions to while using the app or only this time. You can go full hammer mode and disable location services entirely in your phone's settings. But wait! Disabling location services won't prevent your location from being tracked, which is barely scratched the surface here. Providers of location-based services are counting on the fact GPS might not always be available to give accurate readings. That's where radio triangulation comes into play. Unless on airplane mode, your phone is constantly broadcasting its identity and presence to nearby devices. It's looking for cell towers to connect to, and when it finds one, it leaves a data trail on both your phone and the provider of that cell tower. Addresses of these cell towers can be used to estimate your approximate location. The closer you are to more cell towers, the more accurate readings can be estimated. The strength of signal from each cell tower determines the distance between your phone and that tower, which further narrows down your position. Because cell towers are essentially providing a basic functionality for your phone, there is no non-radical way of eradicating this tracking method. Nani? Either stay in airplane mode or remove your SIM card. Using mobile data or cellular network carries a fundamental privacy trade-off. The record of cell tower addresses your phone automatically connects to is usually kept by your phone's manufacturer as well as your network provider. So with a T-Mobile SIM card in your Android phone like um, Samsung with Google Apps, Google, T-Mobile and even Samsung can track your location. The radius of accuracy using this method can be up to a quarter mile in rural areas with fewer cell towers, down to a couple of meters in urban areas with high cell tower density. It can't always pinpoint your exact position, but it still counts as a viable method of location tracking. But what if you hack the system and you use your phone as a Wi-Fi only device? The same thing that's the issue with cell tower addresses can be said about Wi-Fi networks. Each Wi-Fi router has a unique MAC ID and SSID that are blasted into all directions of the router's signal. Your phone's Wi-Fi is constantly looking for wireless signals of nearby routers, and to connect to one, 
you also have to give up your phone's unique MAC ID. Any network you connect to can potentially identify you and even track all the networks you connected to in the past unless you deleted them from your phone. To mitigate Wi-Fi network operators from recognizing your device, you should enable MAC address randomization if your phone supports it. Graphene OS on my Pixel phone supports full randomization, which means my phone will not be recognized by Wi-Fi networks as the same device. Connecting to the internet is also going to leave a record of your IP address at your internet service provider and with the websites or apps you're using. IP addresses are unique to your Wi-Fi router. Your IP address reveals your position within the radius of your router signal. The only reliable way of securely hiding your IP address from apps and services is to route all your traffic through Tor network. On Android, this can be done by installing Orbot, then in your network's advanced options, configure manual proxy settings settings and change proxy hostname to localhost and proxy port to 8118. Alternatively, you can use a trusted VPN service, but this is not nearly as reliable as using Tor. When you're outside, disable your Wi-Fi when it's not in use, forget all networks, and disable Wi-Fi scanning in your settings to prevent services and apps on your phone from scanning for nearby networks to track your location even in airplane mode. If you are the kind of person that enjoys the luxury of wireless peripherals, your location history might be in trouble. Every time you turn on Bluetooth, your phone immediately starts broadcasting identifiable information in all directions. This includes the type of your phone, its MAC address, which is a unique identifier baked into your phone's Bluetooth chip, and the payload with the data being advertised through the signal. These signals can be picked up by anyone, and not just the devices you connect to. The accuracy rate of Bluetooth depends on many factors, but since Bluetooth 5.1 released in 2019, support for radio direction finding enhanced the accuracy down to 1 cm. This is an incredibly precise rate, and it's why businesses and organizations are beginning installing Bluetooth beacons in their buildings to collect unique identifiers from unsuspecting visitors. This beacon system is present in hotels, hospitals, malls, taxis, public transport vehicles, museums, or even on billboards, and their beacons are tracking millions of people. Even pandemic contact tracing apps are using Bluetooth to send alerts to phones in proximity with positively tested people. Many retailers are using Bluetooth beacons to track shoppers and build features. The hottest Bluetooth solution that retailers currently love to experiment with would send you a discount coupon straight to your phone whenever you are near a specific shelf in the store. Retailers don't even need you to install their apps for the purpose of driving ads. Such an opt-in mechanism would be a lot of missed opportunities. Did you install one of the popular news or weather apps? It might have been infested with a secret code that make your phone broadcast its presence to the beacons it passes by. Many of these apps have been paid by Bluetooth beacon companies to embed this code in their apps, either for a usual form of payment such as money or detailed profiles on their users. Bluetooth beacons track your location in an especially sensitive way. They can precisely pinpoint not just your position, but also how long you stayed at a place. Such detailed data is used by advertisers to drive their product campaigns and measure ad reception. Anytime you plug in those wireless earbuds, your data is on sale. And don't kid yourself, this is a problem equally on iPhones as it is on Android. Apple was the first company that created a Bluetooth system of commercial surveillance. It was Apple alongside Google that remotely updated your phone with the latest Bluetooth tracking technology that can be used by third-party developers and governments to build contact tracing apps. Both Apple and Google conduct their own beacon surveillance side by side an unknown number of companies providing beacons to businesses and organizations for detailed surveillance. To make the marketing point about protecting your privacy, developers of Bluetooth tracking technologies often claim they only collect anonymous data or that they randomize their Bluetooth identifiers. It is true that on the software level, both your Bluetooth MAC address and your universally unique identifier can be randomized. However, anyone with access to your Bluetooth information can still collect these randomized data points and enrich them with other, more identifiable data, such as your phone number or physical address. And they can also run their own Bluetooth beacons to collect your Bluetooth location at any time they want. And even if all they had was their Bluetooth location data, researchers from MIT demonstrated how easy it is to de-anonymize mobility data. Using an anonymous database containing only location data, researchers were able to 
re-identify 55% of individuals after one month of collected data. And if you rush to disable your Bluetooth, beware that this is not enough to stop apps on your phone from tracking your location. You need to disable Bluetooth scanning as well, which is on by default and it works even if you turn off Bluetooth. If you now decided to turn your device into an overpriced brick, hold on just a bit more because the creepiest feature is yet to come. Ultrasonic cross-device tracking. Any retail store, venue, or website you visit could be emitting high-frequency tones in their ads, and any ad on your phone with access to your microphone can pick up these inaudible sounds and profile what ads run in near your position. Similarly to Bluetooth beacons, many popular apps and games are loaded with the eavesdropping code, listening to high-frequency sound-emitting beacons wherever you go. These tones can be picked up from any broadcast, including TV, radio, and any internet medium. This is actually how your phone is secretly listening to you. Not by listening to what you have to say, but what everything around you has to say to your phone's microphone in frequencies high enough to be notable to human hearing. Ultrasonic cross-device tracking is so clandestine and effective, it can even de-anonymize Tor users. To be even creepier, because that's what advertisers like to do, there is no way of finding out whether apps on your phone have ultrasonic tracking capability built in them. Unreasonable microphone access to apps that don't need it for any functionality might be somewhat of a giveaway, but even apps that legitimately need access to your mic to provide voice features may be abusing your permission. The best way to mitigate ultrasonic tracking is to downgrade the microphone permission of all apps you granted it to. Deny microphone access to all apps that don't provide any voice-related features and give runtime or even better, one-time permissions to apps that need it for voice calls or recording. Giving up your identity and location data to a retail store that might send you a discount on those cookies you frequently buy may sound like a good trade-off, but that transaction may also reach your health or life insurer, who may decide to raise your fees because your unhealthy eating habits are a predictor of future healthcare costs. Data collection isn't happening to benefit you, it's happening to make advertisers more money. When nothing is free and if it is, you are the product, by protecting your privacy, you might also be saving money. So if this video helped you learn more about location tracking and how to mitigate it, leave a like and comment, subscribe and join my channel, and support me on Patreon. Have a good one.